Simon. He's a science journalist with Wired Magazine and the author of the new book, A Poison Like No Other, How Microplastics Corrupted Our Planet and Our Bodies. Uh, you can find him on Twitter at Mr. Matt, Matt Simon, Mr. Matt Simon, uh, spelled just like it sounds, and uh, at Wired, of course. And Matt, welcome to the program. Uh, to, first of all, let, let, let's start with microplastics, you know, the, the topic of your book. Can you define terms for us and tell us why, why this should be a concern? Sure. The agreed upon definition in the scientific community is microplastics are the little tiny bits that get below five millimeters. And that is about the width of a, a pencil eraser. So we're talking about plastics that you can still see with the naked eye, but they of course get much, much smaller. Um, there are now studies on nanoplastics, which are even scarier because they are down uh, at the micron scale, which is a millionth of a, a meter. So we, we know about plastic bags and plastic bottles. These are the macroplastics. Microplastics are these much smaller fragments that can get into lots of different organisms, uh, and in the case of the nanoplastics, into individual cells. That's how small these things are. Now, I, I read an article a couple of weeks ago in one of the science publications about how, a, how bottled water, just a bottle of bottled water or soda pop, you know, in a plastic bottle, can, can have, you know, typically around three or 4,000, but uh, very often over 10,000 individual nanoplastic particles, these, these super, super small plastic particles that can get into your body and, and like you said, even infiltrate your individual cells. Um, a, is, do, do those numbers comport with your research? And B, what's the significance of that? Why should people worry about this or be concerned about it? Or why should we do anything about yeah. it? Right, yeah, so I, I talk in the book about how basically any estimate, any quantification that you see of microplastics, be it in soda or in water or in food, is most likely a severe underestimate because it is very difficult to quantify nanoplastics. It's very expensive to do so, so not a lot of labs have that technology. So we have to consider not only the, the microplastics, which are a little bit easier to detect than something like soda, um, but these much, much smaller particles. Uh, these are obviously on the size that can very easily get into our bodies. That is largely not through uh, liquids like soda and water, though there are some in that, uh, or in foods, but inhalation is probably actually the, the biggest route of microplastics into our own bodies. Uh, by one scientist's calculation, we are, are inhaling something like 7,000 particles a day, um, and Whoa. probably more, again, because it's harder to find these much smaller bits, and these much smaller bits are actually much more common in the indoor air in particular. Wow, so, uh, you know, uh, we're hearing reports that uh, girls are hitting puberty two years, at boys too, but uh, you know, it's, it's more frequently measured around girls um, because of menstruation. Uh, you know, that the, they're hitting puberty two, three years earlier than they were just 30, 40 years ago, and there's a lot of speculation this might have something to do with some of the plasticizers, these hormone imitating chemicals that are added, uh, uh, that, that are part of plastic, that are used in plastic, particularly flexible plastics. Um, is that uh, a concern? Is that the major concern? What about, you know, the, you know, the gender bending stuff? What about cancer? That is the major concern. That is a group of chemicals known as endocrine disrupting chemicals, a, a broad range of these chemicals, many of which are, are in plastics that make the hormone system generally go haywire. So you get things like increased rates of diabetes, um, uh, obesity, uh, also lots of different cancers. So the issue with these EDCs is that any plastic, its backbone is just carbon. And what's added to that carbon to give it plastics properties like toughness and uh, rigidity, uh, stretchability, that sort of thing, are these additional chemicals that we know to be endocrine disrupting chemicals. The question now is parsing, well, how much of a, a factor is microplastics versus the other routes that we have these EDCs getting into our, our body? So we can quantify how much we're mostly inhaling, we don't yet know how much microplastic is going to be too much microplastic to get in our bodies. But the way that these EDCs work is, is nefarious. They actually have very high toxicity at very low levels, um, which is unlike a lot of other poisons where you think you get a lot of it, uh, you get more poisonous effects. You certainly get those with EDCs, but they also have this weird curve where at medium levels, they're not so dangerous but the very low levels, perhaps what we're getting inhaling from microplastics and nanoplastics, they can have very severe effects. 
Is this why we're seeing human fertility drop all around the world? That is one uh, one of the avenues that this this could be is that plastics. Uh, unfortunately, we just don't really know what's what's in them. Plastics companies aren't required to put an ingredient label uh, on a bottle, for mm -hmm. for instance. So what chemists have to do is reverse engineer them, and they found that there are at least ten thousand five hundred different chemicals used in plastics. A quarter of those are considered to be of concern, meaning they're either outright toxic or they have uh, effects like they're, they're highly persistent in the body or the environment. So we now have to figure out, well, by God, we have had uh, increasing rates of a lot of different kinds of cancers, um, a lot of these other kinds of disorders. The trick is going to be, again, uh, separating the, the contribution of microplastics and maybe macroplastics that have leached chemicals into things like sodas uh, from other sources of EDCs in the environment. That's, I think in the next probably five to 10 years, we'll, we'll get better studies on that. But for now, we know that it's not good to have microplastics in our, our body. It's just how bad is it going to be? We're talking to Matt Simon, the science, science journalist with Wired Magazine and author of the new book, A Poison Like No Other, How Microplastics Corrupted Our Planet and Our Bodies. Um, uh, Matt, the, the uh, Ohio train derailment is in the news right now, and my understanding is that uh, the chemi many of the chemicals that were being carried by that, uh, by that train were precursor chemicals, uh, chemicals used in the manufacturing of plastics. Um, is that the case? And if so, you know, what does that mean for the community? Uh, uh, you know, and, and, and generally, you know, how does that contribute to the toxicity of plastics? It's, it's extremely concerning because the primary chemical here is, is vinyl chloride. Vinyl chloride is what uh, goes into the polymer PVC, uh, polyvinyl chloride. Uh, it's a very common polymer. It is also happens to be one of the polymers that has the most research on, on toxic effects, uh, especially for people who are working with PVC and inhaling PVC dust. Um, there's detrimental effects for for those folks, we know that vinyl chloride is for sure a carcinogen. It is not good to be getting this stuff in your body, not good to be burning it and putting it into the atmosphere. And I think this really lays bare the problem with, with plastics is that we get a bottle or a bag and a product and we think that it just was kind of magically put together. But in fact, to produce these plastics, they are shipping these precursor chemicals all across the United States, all across the world where they're then cobbled together into plastics. And uh, another interesting thing to think about is that there's these things, things called nurdles, these are little tiny lentil sized pieces of plastic that are melted down into products like bottles and bags. Those are also shipped by train and by boat and spill into the environment in truly astonishing numbers. Uh, it's essentially because plastics made out of oils, uh, oil and gas, it's essentially a, a, an oil spill, but these things can travel much farther. So beyond what we're seeing in Ohio right now, we have this massive supply chain that are supplying the world with way too much plastic that is only going to get worse. We're going to get even more of these leakages and disasters because by 2050, there's one projection that plastic expression is going to triple. We just oh. cannot allow that to happen. Now, in Europe, they have the precautionary principle with regard to chemicals that can be put into the environment. Uh, here in the United States, we have the, the libertarian principle, which is that when something starts killing people, then we pay attention to it. Um, is Europe dealing with plastics differently than the United States? Or have, has there just been this assumption for so many decades that this miracle stuff, you know, that came out of the, in large part, out of the 50s and 60s is, is so benign that, uh, you know, uh, no, need, no need to do anything? That's how it was pitched to us, right? Plastics, oh, don't worry about it. It actually makes food safer, mm. right? Um, what was happening all along was that they were leaving chemicals into our food and breaking into microplastics uh, since production began in earnest in the 1940s, um, really taking off after World War II. Europe is way farther ahead on this than we are in the United States, in particular with research. So there is a lot more money flowing into microplastic and nanoplastic research in Europe because their government and universities are not captured by fossil fuel interests in, in large part, but they're also making a lot more progress on banning single-use plastic. Uh, France has uh, an ordinance in place that by 2025, all washing machines need to come in with built-in filters. That is a massive source of microfibers into the environment, washing our clothes, millions of fibers that are made out of plastic, if it's polyester or nylon, are washing out into the ocean. 
put those filters in, that would help. So they're making much more progress over there. But yes, as you say, in the United States, it's like, uh, let's see how this kills people and then we'll maybe address it then. Right. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty tragic. What do you do and what do you recommend people do to reduce your exposure to microplastics and nanoplastics? I want to be clear, first of all, and say that this is not your fault as a consumer that the microplastic problem has sure, become especially if you're inhaling. so awful. <laughs> you know? Yeah, right. Like we didn't ask for this, right? So right. it's like this is a this is a function of capitalism. This is this is companies saving money by packaging things in plastic. It's lighter to ship. They they save on fuel costs that way. Uh, right. It's very simple for them. Um, but that is now a giant experiment done on our bodies. What I try to do is obviously just use as little plastic as possible, just buy less of it, uh, vacuuming a lot. There's just so much microplastic and indoor air that's settling on the floor. Uh, that can help. Um, you can get aftermarket filters for your washing machines. Those help. But at the end of the day, I do not want us to feel guilty about this as individuals. And I want us to feel angry about this because this has been forced upon us by corporations that were profiteering. Yeah. And it is their responsibility to clean up this mess. Matt, they have, should be paying for mitigation measures. Yeah, we have 30 seconds, so we hit a break here. I can't stop. Um, are there any legislators who are taking this on? Do we have any champions in Congress? We do. Uh, Merkley is, is actually making Jeff some progress Merkley on plastics. Yeah. Yeah. So we uh, hopefully get some some progress there. California is doing some good stuff banning single use plastics. So it might start at the state level, hopefully work its way up to the national level. But again, we're captured by fossil fuel interests that can be very difficult to get through. Right. Because plastics are made out of fossil fuels. So <laughs> surprise, right. surprise. Matt Simon, his new book, I Poison Like No Other, How Microplastics Corrupted Our Planet and Our Bodies.